वर्णिवे शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीहरिकृष्ण महाराज नीज श्री घनश्याम महाराज नीज द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी भगवान स्वामीनारायण और पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी ऑल ऑफ डिटी जय स्वामीनारायण वंस अपॉन अ टाइम इन द विलेज गढ़ा श्री जी महाराज वॉज सीटेड इन अंडर द नीम ट्री एट द टाइम द असेंबली वॉज गेदर In the assembly, there were many saints, means Paramahansas, and many devotees also there. But in the assembly, Sri Ji Maharaj was sitting in a fashion of meditation, and after some contemplation, he had opened his eyes, and then. he had described something most important for his devotees what he had spoken at the time let me see <coughs> after a few minutes of contemplation sri ji maharaj said everyone wishes to worship god but their understanding differs but god fully resides in the heart of a person who possesses the following understanding in this way sri ji maharaj wants to describe about the understanding understanding regarding religion one's own belief one one's own duty one's own thoughts bhagwan swami narayan had described so many things in the vachanamrut but here in this vachanamrut of 27th vachanamrut of grada first chapter sri ji maharaj says everyone as a disciple or as a religious follower everyone has wish in his heart that i want to please my god everyone want to worship bhagwan and everyone want to go in the bow in the divine abode of bhagwan after the death but as we have seen today also many thousands and millions of devotees in each religion but all of the devotees have not the same understanding the level of understanding amongst all the devotees they always remain different why there are so many reasons but today sri ji maharaj himself says to his followers in the assembly there were no an ordinary people were there but the great paramahansas as well as the great devotees who had direct contact of bhagwan swami narayan and in that assembly bhagwan says everyone wants to please bhagwan everyone wants to worship bhagwan but still they have something different in their understanding so we have a point in this talk even though we have a contact of bhagwan even though by the grace of bhagwan we can behold his form in our heart but still sometimes we cannot contemplate what he want to say means his words so what type of understanding a devotee should have bhagwan says in the world 
we always observe the world when we are outside on the road we can see the greenery from the window there are many natural places like sea shore river mountains many other things which are not developed or which are not created by human and so most of the people in the world describe such things as nature because nature had made the things so they are natural but we all most of us many times visited ocean many rivers even enjoying boating and bathing in the river also enjoying <clears throat> other natural advantage uh, natural things but but at the time we have just enjoy with our material views but we should contemplate we should view such things with the perspective of religion what is the perspective of Ma- perspectives of maharaj regarding such things maharaj says how we should see the ocean sri ji maharaj says here the ocean can never go outside from his boundary bhagwan had created its boundary even though there is no any obstacle the water of ocean has a chance to go outside but still it remains in its boundary why it is only due to commands of bhagwan in this vachanamrut bhagwan says the earth remains stable and trembles the stars remain steady in the sky the rains fall the sun rises and sets the moon appears and disappears waxes and wanes the vast ocean remain constrained within their boundaries so there are so many varieties of such <clears throat> wonders natural wonders even science cannot define it how such things made how such things created and sometimes such things such wonders will destroy but science cannot explain what what is the real theory behind this but our scripture describe what is the exact theory behind such natural things bhagwan says this is all countless varieties of wonders are due to only the form of god that i have attained this is what our understanding sri ji maharaj want to develop level of understanding of his devotees in this way whenever we see the stars in the sky whenever we enjoy boating in the ocean or in the lake or in the river whenever we have a time we have a chance to enjoy our natural air from the top uh, on the top of the hill and when we enjoy all the natural surroundings from the hill top at the time we should understand that these are not automatical creation but these all things are the creation of my bhagwan bhagwan to whom i worship every day the bhagwan to whom i pray every day when we understand in this way the whole world that this is the creation of my maharaj that will be, become our devotion in this way with this understanding we enjoy 
this worldly, this mundane, this material world. But still, our one view, our one perspective remains stable on the form of Bhagwan. And in this way, we can understand more and more greatness of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now, this is what the outer world, but there are many things within our mind, within our life. Just as sun and moons every day work their duty, they perform their duty according to the wish of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Similarly, there are many things happen in our life also only and only due to Bhagwan's wish, Bhagwan's command. Whether we encounter misery or whether we enjoy some great time in our life, but still these all things are only due to Bhagwan's wish. So whenever we encounter misery, when we enjoy happiness in our life, at that time we have one little thoughts in our mind that this happiness is given me by Bhagwan. But when we encounter misery, when we encounter any trouble in our life, at that time we should also realize that we have this opportunity to remember Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Because he is the all doer. Whatever whatever is doing, whatever is happening in this world, these all things are only due to my Maharaj. Without wish of my Maharaj, there is not even a single thing which happened in this world. Everything happened due to Maharaj wish. So whenever we encounter misery at that time, our duty is to remember Bhagwan because this is also a creation of Bhagwan and enjoy even the misery also. There are many devotees in our Swaminarayan Sampraday at the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan as well as today. Whenever they encounter misery, whenever they feel some happiness in their life, they always believe, they firmly believe that this is only and only due to my Maharaj. There are so many devotees at the time of Sriji Maharaj. Even Sriji Maharaj, most of his life, stay in the Darbar of Dada Khachar. But when we open the life book of Dada Khachar, we can find there are many, many hardships, there are many, many miseries encountered by Dada Khachar. Even though Sriji Maharaj was in the darbar of Dada Khachar, still Dada Khachar have no money even to collect, even to earn some bread. But at that time also, Dada Khachar had the same understanding what here in this Vachnam that Sriji Maharaj described, that everything happened by the wish of my Maharaj. And that's why, even though he encountered physical and worldly misery in the life, but still Dada Khachar had firm faith in the form of Sriji Maharaj, that this is the master of all, this is the Supreme Bhagwan, and whatever he does for me, that will bring me happiness. This is the understanding and that's why Gunaditanan Swami also says in his talks, God is not an enemy of his devotees. Whatever he does, that will bring us happiness. So never, never, never become hesitated while we have some hardship, we have some trouble or suffering in our life. Because at the time of happiness, we have no tension, we have no worry. 
and we enjoy even forgetting the form of Bhagwan. But at the time of hardship, it is our duty to remain stable, to remain stable by mind and contemplate upon form of Bhagwan. At the time, we should understand that this is opportunity given by Bhagwan himself to me to understand his doership, to understand his all doer nature. There is not call, there is means time. Time cannot affect the devotee who understands that the all doer is Bhagwan. One's past deed or the deeds of this birth cannot affect much a devotee who understands that Bhagwan is the all doer. Bhagwan is protector of me. Bhagwan is giver. Bhagwan is grantor of misery to me. In this way, if we realize that Bhagwan is not only the grantor of happiness, but he is the grantor of misery. And one who understands these things while such times is come in the life, such devotee is highly praised by Sriji Maharaj himself. Bhagwan says, such devotee is not an ordinary, but Bhagwan says in the Vachnamrat that person with such form conviction in the form of Bhagwan, even if he is an ordinary person, he is still dear to me and Kal, Karma and Maya are unable to administer their power over him. This is what the benefits to understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan all doer. We understand Bhagwan, the grantor of happiness, but most of us cannot understand Bhagwan, the grantor of misery. Because the nature of human being is that human can never accept misery in the life. He always desire happiness. Whether the person is material, materialistic or religion, religious person also have the same feeling that I always have some happiness from Bhagwan. And that is why Gunaditanan Swami says in his talks, at the time of Mahabharat, at the time of Sri Krishna Bhagwan, Kuntaji, a mother of Pandava, Kuntaji had asked from Bhagwan, Bhagwan, please grant me every time misery, more time of difficulties because in the time of difficulties I can remember you and whenever we have some happiness in life we always forget the form of Bhagwan and that's why Kuntaji had asked misery in the life because to remember Bhagwan what is the meaning of this we should also if we cannot ask from Bhagwan misery in the life, but whenever Bhagwan gives us misery at the time, we should understand this is the pleasant, this is the rajip of Bhagwan upon me. Because Bhagwan is the only administrator upon the devotee. There is no any other demigods that there is no any other person who can administer a devotee. Only Bhagwan can administer a devotee. If a devotee has committed any sins, punishment is always given that devotee by Bhagwan himself. But there is no any other person who can give him punishment. So whenever we encounter misery in our life, at the time, we should understand this is this may be a 
punishment for me for my past deeds in any time knowingly or unknowingly i have committed any sin i have committed mistakes and for that bhagwan has given me this punishment but at the time not even once think or mind why bhagwan give me this misery even though i am doing bhajan of bhagwan why he always give me such kind of misery why is not doing complete my wishes this is the thoughts of a non devotee who is in the dress of devotee if we are perfect devotee we should realize the nature of all doer that is one of the nature of bhagwan and in the life of dada khachar there are many miseries even though sri ji maharaj was his guardian still he had not easily pass his case in the court of bhavnagar 22 times bhagwan sri swami narayan himself grace him and say him that due to the grace of bhagwan due to my wish this time you have victory in the court in this way every time 22 times bhagwan himself grace him with ashirwad but still the other catcher has no victory but physically he had no wit no victory in the life but in the spiritual life he had gained victory even the even from the heart of sri ji maharaj because he has unflinching faith in the form of sri ji maharaj that this is the supreme bhagwan and this is the all doer without his wish there is not a thing single things can happen in the world whether i become victorious in the case or even i lost everything of my possession but still that also become happen only and only due to bhagwan swami narayan this is the understanding of dada khachar so now today would you not like to become like dada khachar if you want to become like dada khachar the highest word used in the vachanamrit the name many times recited by sri ji maharaj recited by nan santo in our scriptures that is dada khachar so if we want to become like dada khachar we have to imbibe his virtue in our life this is the understanding of devotee described in the vachanamrut by sri ji maharaj and such devotee was dada khachar at the time of sri ji maharaj there are many devotees at present time in our satsang there are many saints in our satsang who had such understanding but if we should contemplate our own life whether in the happiness or misery i have such understanding for god or not if we want to become a devotee like dada khachar we have to develop such understanding in our life at the time of happiness in the, at the time of normal condition in our life we can have trust in our own mind that i have such understanding but understanding can never measure at normal time understanding is really measured at the time of difficulties so whenever we encounter any difficulties in our life at the time we should understand this vachanamrut we should 
remembered these words of Sri Ji Maharaj that everything become, everything happen only and only the wish of Sri Ji Maharaj. This is what our understanding. So let us try to imbibe such virtues from the life of Dada Khachar, such words from Sri Ji Maharaj in our life from today and practice in our day to day in our day to day happenings encounters happiness or misery that's why we can develop such understanding at the time of difficulties in our life hari krishna maharaj ni jay प्रभु तो मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो हमारी ये हरि कृष्ण महाराज नि जय गणेश महाराज नि जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नि जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्यपाद गुरु जी ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हम्बल जय स्वामी नारायण You know, practically, when I'm here in Mandir living with Santos, at many, many times, Swami, many, many Santos get phone calls from devotees, non-devotees, regarding how they have some kind of hardship regarding how they have some kind of problem dor bang kar do evo ko so regarding how they have some kind of problem in their life or even something which is bothering them through that i can see that there's some kind or many kinds of problems that people are facing new problems day in day out non stop because i'm personally observing those problems myself staying just as an observer and putting swami in the position where he's listening to the person's problems some problems that the person shares with swami are simple some kind of financial problems or some kind of marital problems but the reality after looking deeply inside is that people only remember god or santos or religion in general is when they have a difficult time in their life but they do not remember god santo who who outside millionaires who comes to mandir no 
because they feel they don't need God, santos, devotees. But about 95% of the time, people remember Bhagwan or people remember santos when they're in some kind of hardship or they're about to encounter some kind of hardship, some kind of problem. Now, before I get to my point, before I get to my subject for today, let me give you a small example, something practically that I think you would be able to understand as well in your life. Suppose you're in high school right now, <clears throat> and you're in high school and you're a straight A student. You're solid in ac academics, everything is okay. And you have AP English, meaning very difficult college credited English. And at your final exam is an essay that you have to write and submit to your professor, your teacher. And you're a straight A student, so this is easy for you. The essay writing is not so difficult. You know what to do. You know what you're going to write about. You've planned it out. You know that this is what I'm going to talk about. These are the references I'm going to use. Everything is good. So you're done with your essay ahead of time. <clears throat> but a couple of classmates that aren't your friends, but they know that you're a really good student and they know that you, they, they know, that you know how to write really good essays, what they do is they start bringing you close to them, talking sweet, starting making you think that they're your friends. Now these kids are the popular kids in school, meaning they're not just regular kids, they're known by a lot of, lot of other kids in school, they're popular. So everyone calls them to parties and everyone calls them to their events, so they're very popular. But they're not so academically bright like yourself. Well, they start bringing you close. They start sharing things with you. They start calling you to their home. Stuff like that, just to build a small relation, just to build a trust. But the thing you don't know is that these people, what they want to do is they're also have English with you, but they want to use your skills for essay writing and have you write their final exam score or final exam essay paper. Now, this is their ultimate goal. <clears throat> now, you're kind of a little innocent, so you fall into the trap and you feel that these are your friends now. They aren't. They've planned it from the beginning that they want to use you to write the essay on different various topics, whatever is given, to get a good score on the final exam. This is their intention. So you go along with their, you can say, fake friendship circle. And after, you don't know this, but you write their whole paper. All three people, you write their paper really solid. They get good grades, you get a good grade. School's over. Everything's done. Right after school ends, right after they... Right after you've written the paper, they completely ignore you now in the summertime. Again, next fall when school opens again, you see them. You try to say hi or you try to at least engage with them in some way. But they ignore you. They don't even talk to you. They, it feels like you are a ghost to them. They don't even know you anymore. So you feel deeply hurt and you think, what mistake you made, you might have said something to them, or you might have reacted in some way that was not cool or popular in that fashion. But then you realize after that they used you for your skill of writing the essay to get good grades. And then they had nothing to do with you. They had nothing to do with becoming your friends. And then at that point, when you realize this, how do you feel? Miserable, completely like dump. Because 
you've just got used for your skill without any kind of, you can say, some kind of good intention or without any kind of credit if you're looking for that. Now, taking this example of being used in the same way when we encounter some kind of hardships financially or academically or in any kind of fashion form in this world, what do we do? We remember God at that time. Not when we're stable, not when we're doing okay, not when we're actually excelling and progressing in the world. No, not at that time. Only when we have difficulties. Going back to that example, what I'm trying to say is just like how those people used you and then you felt the pain inside. Just think that by just only remembering Bhagwan, when we encounter such kinds of hardships, aren't we using Bhagwan as a tool to get our misery far away from us? That's my question to you. If you do feel that you are using Bhagwan, then you have some kind of, or you must have some kind of guilt trip that Bhagwan is Bhagwan and I'm using him. This is not the characteristic of a devotee of God. But today's lecture is moreover realizing what we want from Bhagwan and what we can do for Bhagwan to please him. Now, a lot of people say that it is difficult to think of Bhagwan when you're in a good, stable position in your life. That's wrong. Take for the example, suppose you're driving a car, you turn on the radio, oh, also, a phone call comes on your cell phone. You pick up the phone, you're talking with your friend at one time, you're also listening to the music at the other time with your other ear. You're also looking at the traffic ahead. You're looking at your rear, mirror, rear, rear view mirror at time to time. You're looking at your side view mirrors. And at red lights, you're stopping. You're doing everything. You're doing everything right so you don't get into an accident and you're safe and sound. This is all done at the same time. Yet, no problems are encountered. In the same exact way, when we think that, you know, I of course remember Bhagwan when I have difficulties, but when I don't have any difficulties, I don't remember Bhagwan. You may not realize that, you know, you have, you're remembering Bhagwan only in the times of difficulties, but in the times when you're stable, when you're good, and you remember Bhagwan, that's true devotion. Nevertheless, it's possible. Just like how driving a car and you can do multiple tasks in the same way. Just like how walking, talking, uh, eating, doing various tasks, you can remember Bhagwan. But it's all up to you. How strong-willed you are. Now, there's two types of devotees. A niskam devotee and a sakam devotee. A niskam devotee is a selfless devotee. And a sakam devotee is a selfish devotee. This topic connects with these two types of devotees. Why? Because when we remember Bhagwan and we want something from Bhagwan, any kind of materialistic pleasure, nothing God-related, any kind of materialistic pleasure, this is considered to be a Sakam devotee. And when we only desire for Bhagwan and nothing else, then that's the characteristic of an Iskam devotee. So, regarding the points that we've talked about, when encountering such kind of difficulties, when we remember Bhagwan and when we ask for not 
those difficulties to get away from us or to abandon us. But we ask Bhagwan that whatever you do, you're doing the right thing for me, Bhagwan. I don't want anything from you. This is a sign of Niskam devotee, and such a devotee, Bhagwan completely surrenders to. But not only on one incident, many, many incidents, Bhagwan views this. And when you pass his test, Bhagwan becomes completely surrendered to you, and you become his, you can say, ekantik, topmost devotee or bhakta. Even in the time of Bhagwan, there's many, many devotees that encountered such kind of difficulties. Not comparable, comparable to today's standards, but much more difficult. But through their faith, through remembering Bhagwan, they were saved. Because they had no selfish intention. intention. They had a selfless intention. Take for the example of Naja Jogya. Naja Jogya was a a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And at that time, he lived in the village called Boira. Now, Vasur Kachar was the chief of this village, and he was cruel, and he was completely against Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So at that time, Vasur Kachar found out that Naja Jogya is a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So what he did was he threatened Naja Jogya by saying, where's your Bhagwan? Show me your Bhagwan. Naja Jogya said, Bhagwan is here. He is here with me in my heart and he also resides 250 kilometers away in the village of Vishnagar. Now, Vasrukhachar was just not your ordinary bully, you can say. He wanted to get deep down and dirty. So what he said what he threatened Naja Jogya was that if your Bhagwan does not come here by tomorrow, then I will break your kneecaps and you will become crippled for life. This was a threat that Vasrukhachar made to Naja Jogya. Naja Jogya become, became a little shaken up by this because he knew that it would happen. But moreover, he knew that Bhagwan Swamiran was 250 kilometers away in the village of Vishnagar. So how is he going to bring Bhagwan Swamiran here to prove to Vasur Kachar that this is Bhagwan Swamiran? It couldn't be done in one day. 250 kilometers could not be covered in one day. But what he did was he prayed to Bhagwan that Bhagwan, I have kept your faith. You are the Supreme Lord, and I wish to and I wish to only praise you. And he explained the situation of Bhagwan in his prayer. Bhagwan in Vishnagar, the all knowing omniscient Bhagwan Swamiran, he completely understood and completely heard each and every prayer of Naja Jogya. So Bhagwan set out from Vishnagar to come to his village, which was 250 kilometers away, at the nighttime, barefoot, and Bhagwan covered those 250 kilometers by the night, which no one, no Bhagwan, or no other, you can say, ordinary person can do. And he saved, you can say, the life of Naja Jogya by proving to Vasukhachar that he was Supreme Lord himself. Now, the moral we have to look at is Naja Jogya's faith, of course, in Bhagwan. But moreover, his prayer for Bhagwan was not any selfish motive. It was selfless. He thought of Bhagwan, his reputation, that this is Bhagwan Swaminari, but this person does not understand. So, I have to, or I have to pray to Bhagwan to perform some kind of miracle so this person understands that this is Bhagwan Swamiran himself. And Bhagwan listened to a selfless prayer and he came to the rescue of Vasur Kachar. So saying that even in times of difficulties or even when one is not encountering or has encountered any kind of difficult situations, 
remembering Bhagwan should be a habit to a devotee of Bhagwan, Swami Narayan. A habit which is very, very done just like we have a habit of, you can say, eating in the morning, afternoon, and night. Just like how we have a habit if we have a timetable that we go to sleep at 10 o'clock, no matter what happens, but 10 o'clock I will go to sleep at night time. We have a habit of doing this. We have a habit of biting our nails. We have a habit of eating such kind of foods, etc. So on and so on. Just like that, making a habit of remembering Bhagwan in each and every activity is a characteristic of a true devotee. And through that, Bhagwan becomes pleased, and through that, Bhagwan recognizes that this is a selfless devotee over a selfish devotee. So, saying this, understand that remember, remembering Bhagwan not only in the time of difficulties is the characteristic of a devotee, but remembering Bhagwan even when one is not or has not encountered any kind of misery. It's the characteristic of a true devotee. Saying this, my humble day, Swami.